Hello, this is Bill Griggs from CNC Router Tips, and I was recently asked by one of our members, Aaron, to uh, help him with a project he had uh, where he wanted to draw a flag pattern over a mask and um, using VCarve Pro 8. So I thought I'd show you some of the reasons why it might be best to draw this by hand rather than use the automatic tools. So to begin in VCarve Pro you would click on this icon which would open up a, a, a window which would let you choose the file. In this case it's a flag mask JPEG. Now you'd click on that and hit open and you would get uh, the file. Now I've already um, loaded the file and got it sized properly. Uh, but it's essentially just uh, double clicking on the uh, JPEG image that shows up and dragging these handles to um, change the size. So I'm not going to mess with that right now because I want to show you something. So if you select the JPEG that you just brought into your um, job and then you select this bird shaped item, it's going to trace a bitmap to fit the vectors. Okay, and the first thing it'll do is it will come in with multiple colors, in this case 16 colors, and try and um, give you um, something to select from the image. But you can reduce the number of colors to get the basic outline of the shape, which is what you really want. Now, it's not going to give you perfect results. In fact, um, I've already imported completed that process and, and done one and I've got it here on layer one and you can see I'm going to turn off this mask here for a second then it gave us a shape that's roughly what we want but there's some areas like here at the nose that are not what we want so I'm going to turn the mask back on and you'll see um, because this is a picture it's got different sh shadows in, in places that you may not want it. Like, for instance, you may have wanted the nose to go up along the side here, but instead it followed a darker shadow that was on the picture. And furthermore, if you zoom in um, to this part of the uh, mask, you see it's really jagged, and that wouldn't be at all suitable for cutting. You'd have the, the cutter coming along and, and moving like that up the, the path. So there's a couple of ways you can attack this to fix it. You can either come in and node edit all of those nodes, try and move them over and drag them over one by one to you know to fix whatever it is that uh, is is wrong. Or you could just go ahead and, and trace the mask um, or areas of the mask manually, and that might be a quicker solution. So if I were going to attack this one, and I wanted to use the majority of what I had, what I would do is I'd drag around these points here. And I'd either delete them or try and make them into a line. Now if you right click when you have one of these nodes selected, let's pick this one. It pops up a um, a chart of all the uh, commands that you can do to those nodes. One of them is to um, you know close vectors with straight lines, um, and there's a few other commands like you can make things straight or uh, or um, try and align them. And so what I would do is I would drag these. I'm going to try and select those again. I would drag the box around these. Maybe down to about there. Press the L command. And what that did was it made the top point that I had selected and the bottom point that I had selected. And it made a straight line between them. And you can see turn off the uh, bitmap layer here for a second. 
it straightened that out and got rid of a whole bunch of um, uh, lines. It also left behind some noise. These little pixels here. They're of no real value in the, in the project. And you can see I have quite a few of them. I'm going to zoom in so you can see them. But they're just sitting there floating around. And you can delete those without harming anything. I'm going to turn the bitmap back on. Now we're going to fix the rest of these um, lines. We go back into the drawing tools and we select node editing. Okay. Um, most of these are not going to be of use, so I'm just going to grab one and uh, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab one of the blue nodes and I'm going to bring it over at the edge where I think it ought to be. And then I'm going to grab this node. I'm going to bring it up beneath it. Then I'm going to drag a window around the other nodes and hit L. In a straight line. I'm going to hit D to delete this one. And if you don't know what these commands are, you can always just right click and this will pop up. The D was for delete point. Um, the L is not shown here. That's just one of those that you're going to have to learn. Um, so it, it doesn't seem to be documented right here. But um, it is a very useful tool. Now this line here coming across the bridge of the nose is straight up. So I might drag this one point to about where I think it's supposed to go. Drag a window around these points select this one that I missed and hit L again. Delete that one. Now I've got a straight line across there. Okay, so that's showing you how to node edit this drawing. But in actuality, it's probably quicker for me to just create it from scratch. So I'm going to take this Um, outline that we've created here and I'm going to move it to a new layer. That's old outline. And I'm going to change the color of that layer to red and I'm going to make that layer um, inactive so that it's invisible. There we go. So now you see that line is gone. And I'm going to show you how quickly I could um, make my own trace of this. So this is going to seem counterintuitive, but I'm just going to use the straight line tool. I'm going to start by clicking somewhere here, going straight down until I see it's roughly 90 degrees. I'm going to try and split that nose. It doesn't have to be perfect because the drawing is not perfect. There we go. So that's a straight line. And I'm going to pick a side of this mask. I'm going to go ahead and start tracing roughly with a couple of clicks. The shape of the mask and you don't have to get it perfect because we'll fix that in a second. See, I'm just following the mask uh, outline around. I'm not even being particularly careful where I place my points. I just want to be in the general vicinity. Okay, and then 
I'm going to stop there when I came back by hitting the escape key. So that drew this one side of the mask. Now if I look at this with the uh, bitmap layer turned off, you'll see it is not perfect. It's kind of blocky. Okay, turn that bitmap back on. And I'm going to turn on the node editing for this setup. And then I'm going to drag a window around this portion here and hit the S key. Um, one more time. Now what that did was it um, smoothed out these lines and converted them to uh, Bezier curves. So um, that gives me control points and handles that I can use and drag to, to get a pretty accurate shape set up. Um, to this drawing. The first thing I'm doing is, is just dragging the blue control points close to the edge of where they're supposed to go. And then I'll take the handles that come off of each of those control points and I'll fine tune the line. Like for instance, we can see that this sticks up a bit. So I can take this handle and just move it over and now it aligns better. And I see that this doesn't bow out quite enough, so I grab the handle, pull it up, out it comes. And I can repeat that on this other side. Remove the control point slightly. And in pretty quick fashion, I'm coming real close to the original shape that uh, we had in the mask. Now in this one you can see this handle sticking up and, and how there's this bump up in the line. We'll just drag it down and it got closer. And this one came up a little bit. Okay, and you would do that all the way around the mask. So when you look at, at what we have now, you turn off the bitmap layer, you can see it's a lot smoother, a lot more accurate to the shape, and there's no big jagged um, lines. In fact, this might even be close enough now to stop without editing the whole rest of this, but just for exercise you can do that. Grab a few of the nodes and hit S, and you can fine tune them. That's Good enough right there for me, I think. Um, let's do the same thing over here. There's fewer points. To work with, so it might might be um, might not be uh, worth messing with this part a whole lot. And you can either drag them over, or you can use the shift and the arrow keys fine control like that. Now when I grab those to use the S key, you can see I grabbed this control point here and uh, I really didn't need that one on the end because it was holding for a right angle so I just grabbed this and now I can move in this area and get this squared away. Again, none of this is critical. It's uh, just how you get better results. Uh, this is you know, it can be time consuming um, sometimes, but if it takes you a few more minutes to do it this way and you get better results, then in my opinion, it's worth the extra time.
And you may be wondering why I only did half of the mask. And there is a definite reason for that. Um, this mask, which we're, we're done editing, is um, symmetrical. So to save more time, I only have to mess with half of the mask. So I grab this line that we just edited. And I also grab this line by holding down the shift key. And then I come over to the mirror command. And I'm going to flip about a line, which was the second line I clicked. And I'm going to create a mirrored copy. So I'm going to hit the button. And I have both sides of the mask done. Now, let's turn off the bitmap layer. And you'll see what we got. Now, is it exactly, does it exactly match the mask? No. But it's close enough. And in fact, being symmetrical, uh, I would submit it to be a better uh, representation of what you want. Um, but if you wanted to, you could come in and note edit the other side to, um, to get it to be perfect. I personally wouldn't bother. But if I did, I could grab all of these and then just grab one as a control point, shift them over. And okay, but realistically, I would not do that. hitting the undo key to take it back to the way it was. Okay. But there you would have two sets of lines that you could join um, to give you the outline of your, um, your part using the join command. To uh, deal with all the stripes that are on the face of this helmet, we're going to take the center line here and offset it um, about nine uh, nine hundred thousandths of an inch or so to um, uh, give us a, just a rough estimate of how far over they're going to go. Let's go in the opposite direction. There we go. And since this is hand painted, these stripes are probably not um, all going to be even. So if I offset the next one, it may not line up. But it's close, uh, and that gave you know an estimate. So um, I've already done a layer with those stripes on it. We'll just turn them on in blue so that you can see uh, these stripes that we're working on. And um, let me go back in and select that. Okay. Uh, 
these stripes will give us a shot at um, getting uh, carvings uh, correct. So um, I've got a line coming across that represents the bottom of the blue field. Um, and we can use the edge that's gonna created from the center line, this bottom line, and from the part outline. And uh, that would be one area that we'd cut and we could create uh, our patterns for that. Now, um, how would we deal with the stars? Well, we could use the star tool that they have. It's five-sided stars. And you could come roughly into the center of one of these stars. And you could drag out to roughly where the tip of the star is. Hit apply. And then we could rotate that star to get it to align. By using these little blue handles. And there you go. You see it. it's roughly the the right size for these stars and if not you can shrink it a little bit or uh, expand it depending on what what it is that you need and you notice it doesn't line up perfectly with these hand painted stars and that's because they were hand painted um, but once you have one star you can then copy and paste that star with the others so you hit Control C to copy, Control V to paste, then you could use the Move and Scale tool, and you can drag that copy over to the next location. And then you could hold down the Control key and drag over to the next location, and it will have created another star. So if you hold down the Control key again, you can just repeat that process. And pretty soon you'd have all your stars in place. And there may be one or two we missed, so just, yep, down here, select one of the stars, hold it, press the move key, hold down the control, the uh, control key, and drag, hold down the control key, and drag. That's it, all your stars in place, everything. So, a little less than 20 minutes of playing around, and we've got the whole design ready to go. Wherever there is an outline that uh, crosses with these stars, we can just use the trim tool to get rid of them. And turn off the bitmap layer to see that. You just come here, grab your um, interactive trim tool, and you can trim those off. And I left the rejoin trim sections, so it won't leave any uh, um, open vectors. So I may have missed just one more, and yep, and it's right here. So that would be the stars for the lower part, upper part. Then we could come in and trim away what's left of these, these lines. So we're not going to use those. Close that. Now I'm just going to select what's left rather than Clicking it multiple times. Get rid of those. 
Just come in and trim the rest. Maybe you don't need this horizontal line. beyond this edge. Don't need these vertical lines to go beyond the outline. Now you would have everything that you need to recreate this design. There you have it. Oh, I missed a couple of lines here real quick. Oh, I didn't get So you see, we could start with just an image file, um, do an auto trace, or we could go in and create our own um, outlines, our own files, and generate just the uh, exactly what it is that we want for this mask. The next video, I'll show you how to toolpath this. I'm Bill from CNC Router Tips. Thanks for uh, watching.